It's a cutscene time. Yeah, very diligent viewers might have noticed bits of, of this before. Good golly, I am rusty. It's been a very long time since I've done just regular animating. I have a lot of practice to do. Much of my career has been spent in the, the technical side of things. It's why most of my videos are about teaching software rather than teaching the RT animation side of things. It's time I fix that and try and catch up to many of my peers, or at least attempt to. In the very first willpower recap video, I had the, the drawing of the character, and then just for funsies, drew another one where I was all like badass looking. Thought wouldn't it be fun if every now and then the, the graphics sort of just switched to that, just to like, oh, look at you, you got a thing, you defeated a thing, oh, uh, g g exciting moments. So that's what this is. It's a very confronting experience, <laughs> having to rediscover many fundamental techniques that I really should not be forgetting. The approach was a couple of keyframes to start. This one, uh, this one, and well, not that one. <laughs> you may notice that the first few frames have significantly more detail as I try to in between it and approach it from a more technique I usually use, which is, you know, just two keyframes, switch on the onion skin and in between it out. Usually when dealing with rigs, that's the only type of frame by frame you need to do. If you're like opening a hand or whatever, it's not that dynamic, you don't need to use a whole lot of uh, crazy tricks. But this does, this is movement and acting and emotion, or at least it's meant to. So I did a rough, rough, uh, just simple circle, like just did, just focusing on the head and being like, okay, where does that move? Around there, around there, around there. Sort of just made it up as I went, drawing fast enough that I could start to feel the movement. And then went over that. What's this called, a tie down? And most of this still wasn't focusing on entire frames at a time, but more of a rapid flipping movement. Where, you know, I'd draw this first time and then be like, oh, okay, so that's going up like there. Oh, yeah, all right, so, oh, that's down there now. Uh, focusing on usually a single stroke or component at a time to make sure that it is staying on form the whole way through. This also turned out to be the first major case where I've depended on the shift and trace tool quite heavily. Quite coincidentally, it has been retooled in a version of Harmony that just came out, where it operates in the camera view. It's always it's always been there, and I've looked for opportunities to use it, but this is the first time where I've really needed it. It's not really the place to be talking about Shift and Trace today, but there will be a bunch of feature nugget videos coming out very soon, if you're interested in knowing more about what it is, how it works, and how to take advantage of it. Very good for frame-by-frame -frame stuff. So moments like this head turning here, it's shifting around the screen quite a bit, so it's good to be able to just focus on the rotation itself. The inking process was fairly therapeutic, again, mainly focusing on individual strokes at a time. Going blah, duh, duh, all the way through, rather than whole frames. This portion I was less satisfied with. It seems pretty, pretty clunky, pretty wobbly, a little bit amateur overall especially in the way that it eases and slows down. I tried shuffling the exposures around a lot, as you can see, some bits in twos, some bits in threes. And even with using onion skin flipping and shift and trace, there's still some parts where the, the model is a bit, uh, yeah. I think overall one of the big takeaways is the lines are probably a bit too thick. They, they stay the exact same thickness as it zooms out, so it becomes a little bit crowded when the image is, is small. Maybe I should allow for some variation on smaller figures or even incorporate a little bit more keyframing and tweening and have it scale out, not just the drawings moving out. It's like the difference between there and there. Is, is all of that necessary? On top of that, if the character design is also different for these cutscenes, drawn with deliberately a lot more detail and contours, thinner outlines would probably fit that look much better than keeping it as thick and bold as the very cartoony gameplay. I'd still like to see this one through to the end. The shading has started, mainly just been colored, but I'll, I'll give the first frame a heavy, probably like three tone shading, try and give it lots of nice black bold bits and then carry that through as well. See how that looks. Whether or not this makes it into the actual game or not is up for debate. I guess I'll see how I feel in probably six months from now. Uh, but I know that many of you watching are very skilled animators as well. Any feedback or criticism you have, that would be, that'd be wonderful. Thanks for your time, thanks for your thoughts.